Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm Brad and on this episode of Trail Recon, I'm gonna show you how to transform the seats in your Jeep from this to this. That's right guys, today I'm gonna show you how to install leatherseats.com leather interior kit in the Jeep. This is really gonna be cool. It's gonna make for a whole new look inside the Jeep. I mean, we got this silver which is gonna match, it's gonna brighten things up in there. Very, very cool. Now I know that there's a lot of pros and cons going leather versus cloth. Leather is really nice to have. I just like the feel of leather, I love the smell of leather, but cleaning it and conditioning it is really easy, so taking care of these seats is gonna be a lot less labor. I'm really looking forward to it. And the cool thing about these seats is you go over to leatherseats.com and man, the customization options are endless. You can choose different colors, you can choose different stitching, different patterns, all kinds of stuff for the Jeep and any other kinds of cars as well. So it's really cool how they have it designed. It only takes a couple of weeks and they send them out to you and then you just install the entire kit. And so that's what I'm gonna show you here today, guys. Now, I'm no interior professional. I'm figuring this out as I go. It's a little bit of work, but I'm gonna show you how to get this done in your garage all by yourself with just some basic hand tools. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do is remove the front seats. There are just four bolts and a wire clip underneath. Then with the seats on its side, you want to remove the lean back handle by pushing the pin out from behind the handle. Then remove the two bolts on each side that hold the seat back to the seat bottom. Starting with the base of the seat back, remove the U-clip holding the fabric together and the two straps on either side. Now you can remove the headrest and all you have to do is put pressure on both tabs at the same time and pull it up. Now you're ready to start peeling back the seat fabric and carefully separating the Velcro strips. Working from side to side as you pull down seems to work best. Grab yourself a good set of snips because you will be using them a lot on this project. Begin removing the hog rings that are holding the fabric to the foam. With the hog rings removed and the Velcro separated, you can start by pulling the rest of the seat fabric off. Now you're going to need to stretch the fabric around the headrest clips to remove them completely. Now you're ready to move on to the seat bottom. Flip it over and begin removing all the plastic clips that are all the way around the edges. Once you've got all the clips removed, then you can start tackling all the hog rings. There are four along each edge and three across. So get out those snips and get to work. This was the first time I had ever used hog ring pliers before, but they are super simple. Just place the hog ring in the plier slot and then apply pressure and squeeze until it makes a full ring. And just a quick tip before you install the new leather, let it sit out in the sun for a while. It makes it a lot easier to work with. When installing the new cover, you want to make sure that you have it lined up perfectly before installing the new hog rings. Then, begin at the center and work your way to the edges, installing the new hog rings in the same places you remove the old ones from. Be sure to stretch the fabric and line it up perfectly when pressing it into the Velcro strips. Once all the hog rings are in place, slide the seat belt through the fabric and start stretching the fabric over the seat foam. Next, go ahead and flip the seat bottom over 
and begin hooking up all the clips all the way around the edges in the same locations you removed the old ones from. Now comes a delicate part, and I'm not going to lie, I wasn't excited about having to cut holes in my new leather to make holes for the seat and backs, but just make your holes small and know that the fabric will stretch a little. Now we can turn the attention to the seat back. When installing the new leather on the seat back, it's helpful to have it turned inside out and then just work your way from side to side. Be sure to line everything up with the Velcro straps and don't forget to install the new hog rings. Now for the U-clip. And I'm not sure what I was doing wrong, but out of everything in this project, these gave me the most trouble. You really have to stretch the fabric and make sure you line it up the plastic clips just right. Even after doing this on all the seats, I still never found an easy way to do it. You just gotta muscle through it. With all the leather stretched and everything clipped up, we're ready to reassemble the seat. Oh, and another hole needs to be cut for the seat back handle, and this section of leather is actually two layers thick, so it's a little more difficult, but just take your time. Reinstalling the handle, it helps to install the pin slightly before putting the handle on. Then you can just reach up behind underneath and press the pin into place. Now we need to cut two more small holes in the top of the seat for the headrest clips. Make sure you cut these holes small because the fabric will stretch over the clips. Moving on to the headrest, just undo the clip at the base and then start slowly compressing the foam while you're pulling and stretching the fabric. You really need to use a good bit of elbow grease to get this thing off, and the new one on is just as tough. After you get the new headrest leather on and attach it to the clips, you're done. You're ready to install your new leather front seat. Now for the back seats. The headrest is removed by pressing on the front base where the two rods are that stick through. There are a couple pins inside that will release once you press and lift. Next you're going to need to remove the plastic trim on the seat handle. Pull the handle forward and then press firmly on the plastic trim to release the rear clip and then carefully slide it up on the front. Take your time, you do not want to bust these clips. Now unzip both zippers on the back corners of the seat back and remove the U-clip to separate the fabric. And next, remove the bolt holding the seat belt on and set that aside. Now you can begin pulling up the old fabric. There's no need to remove the rear seats. I was able to easily get this done with them still installed. And of course, you've got more hog rings to remove. Now the last thing you need to do before we can pull this off is to remove the plastic clip where the seat belt passes through the fabric. There are some small pins that you need to carefully stretch the fabric over to remove. Just take your time. Now it's time to crawl up under the rear seats and begin removing all the clips. These are similar to the same clips on the front seat. Once all the clips are undone, you can untuck the fabric from the rear and remove the whole seat foam base as a whole. Then stretch and pull all the fabric off the foam and remove all those hog rings. By this time, you're becoming an old pro at this. Now you're ready to install the new leather. 
lining up everything and putting in the new hog rings. Moving back inside the Jeep and once again, turning the leather inside out. Install the new seat back. Don't forget to put the seat belt through and reinstall the plastic plate. Just like on the front seats, you've really got to work the leather from side to side, front to back, stretch it, pull it, tug it. Just muscle it, it'll get there. And how many times have I said hog ring so far in this video? Yeah, you've got the idea, guys. Every place that you remove the hog ring, you just add one. Once the fabric is in place, you can tackle the U-clip and then you're done. Just zip everything up and reinstall the seatbelt. Reinstalling the handle trim, just use the same method you did before. Give it a good press and then slide it down. Now you're ready to reinstall the seat bottom. Just line up the foam, pull the fabric around, and hook up all those clips underneath. Just one last bit of cutting to do. You've got to make a couple holes for the headrest post to slide up on. Once the headrest is installed, you are all set, and the other section of rear seat is much easier. What a great do-it-yourself project. I am so glad that I did this myself because I learned a lot about interior and hog rings and all kinds of cool stuff. Just a very cool project, guys. For a beginner, I think somebody could knock this out with a little elbow grease and hand tools in about four to six hours. You know, it takes me about three to four times longer because I'm monkeying around on camera. But for a beginner, I think this is a reasonable project. And I just love the way it looks. I mean, the transformation inside the Jeep is just awesome. It's a nice custom touch. And I love the touch of that leather. And the smell of the leather is great. It's almost as good as the smell of bacon. Not quite, but pretty close. Now, I have been driving around on the front seats for the last couple days before I finally got to the rear, and I will say they're a little more comfortable. Not dramatically more comfortable, but you can tell that there's more padding in there, which I really like. That's a nice thing that I did not expect. So I really, really am very happy. The quality is awesome. Now, I want to thank the folks over at LeatherSeats.com. If you are thinking about doing this project, go visit their website. They've got a lot of customization options over there for you. And hey, if you've enjoyed this content, please consider supporting my Patreon page so we can help make more of this content for you. I will leave a link in the description. I really appreciate it. And if you're visiting the channel for the first time, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a member of the Trail Recon team. Thanks for watching.